uh, visualization package is a good thing. And there are others, visit being one of them. So, uh, time for just a few questions. Questions, anybody? So I have a question. So TerraGrid is just about to invest, or is investing in several new visualization facilities. Yes. And I was told by some distinguished leader in TerraGrid that the key idea that was new is that you can now do remote visualization. That it is realistic to sit in your home institution and view the visualizations made on TerraGrid. How does that, so, I mean, which in the past probably the, into the network connection was not fast enough, or maybe something was not right. How does, how does that fit in with your discussion? Um, that's you're probably referencing the uh, uh, Envision portal that uh, TAC is running. Yeah, well, they had one of the early ones. Remember, there were several awards. That's, I think yes. there's also and one of I think there are about three awards in that area. I'm not quite certain. Right. I think there's two. One is at TAC and one is at, uh, at Oak Ridge or at Nix. Yes. And the, uh, um, I think TAC is, is, is the group that's, that's pushing the, uh, uh, the uh, um, remote visualization. They have a, a portal. Again, built with VTK, they call it Envision, E-N-V-I-E-N-Vision. Uh, e um, and uh, yes, th they're actually doing all of the pipeline, all that visualization pipeline on their big uh, visualization systems, Longhorn, and I forget the, the, uh, the name of the other. And then they're just actually scraping the pixels because uh, they have some graphics hardware there. They're bringing the pixels to your web browser. So and then uh, every time you, you say you want to interact with the parameter you're sending, a command back to their system, it's rendering a new frame and, and bringing it back. So uh, I have not tried it yet. Um, it, I think it's looking much more promising. And I think the only potential downside is that um, it would require someone to um, uh, learn yet, yet another interface. But again, it's built on VTK, so it's following those same sorts of, uh, it does things that you would expect if you use Paraview, if you used Visit or MyVi. It's also possible to do those things with uh, with Paraview, but it, it, it puts more of a burden on the user to uh, to set up the proper uh, batch files and to script things, uh, wait for their uh, nodes to become available, uh, and then to uh, and to make the connections. So, um, if you believe what Alex Salay said, such a, such a model of remote visualization is sort of the only practical way. You're going to start visualizing these very large data sets. That are I believe that would, yeah, for the very the very largest ones. But I think depending on the particular visualization needs, if you have walls, tile displays, or uh, stereo displays, um, and uh, immersive types of displays, if those are better suited for the task at hand, you might still need to cut that pipeline at a different uh, location. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I have a question at Penn State. I'm sorry. We have a question at Penn State. I'm sorry if I interrupted. Oh, yeah, please, no please ask your question. Um, hi. Could you just quickly summarize why um, Paraview might be a better tool to use with large sets of data as opposed to other uh, visualization tools? Because, uh, mainly because it has that, that scalability. It, it is widely supported on the Terra grid and some other um, cyber infrastructures. Are, is there a particular tool that you were maybe thinking about using instead? Uh, no, nothing in particular. Yeah. And it's sort of, you know, there are other tools that, that, that do scale. I want, want to be very clear about that. Uh, but uh, in an area where people um, are, um, you know, come to us for recommendations, uh, this is the one that we found uh, uh, is, is the easiest for people to learn, and it does have that, that scalability. Um, and so, um, yeah, but, but there are others that, that would work. But if you don't have a preference, then pick this one because we can, we can support you better. We can support a larger community. That's part of our thinking. Search. 
how much geospatial awareness is there in Paraview? Um, good question. I, I, um, I don't know for sure. I mean, they're clearly, uh, we, we've done that um, with, uh, with Gary Pavlis's data set. We brought in some uh, topo overlays or, or some you know, state boundaries so we could have some reference marks and brought them in. But it, it's probably uh, not the best if you're very, you know, if you're doing a lot of uh, things that would be the domain of traditional GIS packages. It could be that one of those would be better. Um, so uh, I know that the uh, Titan toolkit uh, has features for uh, geolocating uh, data, you know, showing uh, so geographical networks and so forth, uh, and I think those two, uh, if they're not merged now, they will be. Those features will sort of be merged in. So I think as it as it grows and that becomes more important, you'll probably see more of those features. Minnesota has a question. question. Yeah, we have a question. Are you still passing? Okay. Um, I want to know uh, what is the state of the art between uh, Paraview and the current uh, GPU computing platforms? And hardware. Ah, good question. Um, there are some advanced features of of Paraview and Visit and VTK uh, that can actually take advantage of of some of those uh, GPU uh, based rendering uh, sorts of, of things. So um, I know there's, uh, for example, there's a, a real-time ray casting thing called Manta Ray uh, that uh, has come out of the University of Utah, and it's possible to replace your OpenGL renderer with a, uh, a pseudo real-time ray tracer based on on Manta Ray. So the so the architectures are there where you can replace those rendering windows with with some other things, and the hope is that you know that you if you're just writing raw GPU code uh, or CUDA code. Uh, you might always be able to come up with a, a cooler or a faster algorithm, um, but if you do it within that pair of you architecture or the visit architecture or one of those other packages uh, that are scalable, then you don't uh, have to, uh, it's not a choice of one or the other. So, um, but I, I am not familiar with the specific things they have in there. I know, I don't know George, do you uh, um, happen to know if they've got features in there? George Otto. Uh, thank you. Um, I wasn't. I wasn't sure that was me, George. But uh, oh. no. Um, I, actually, no. I can't. I can't talk to specific implementations. We haven't done that here. But I was just looking online, and you know, there are so there is some new G, GPU support in VTK, and uh, some uh, presentations out there about setting up uh, Paraview with uh, GPU uh, Viz clusters. So a little googling, you might find some useful things out there. It's, not much help, but that's that's all I know. Thank you. Uh, I have a Mr. question. Auto, another I'm sorry. Other questions? Uh, I have a quick question from University of Minnesota. Okay. Um, so, uh, amongst the processing stages, which is the most computing intensive stage? Is that filtering, rendering, displaying, and so on? It depends. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, um, you know, if, if you have, let's say, uh, depending on your file format, let's say you have everything stored in very large files, um, and you say you're only interested, you know, say you have, uh, you know, several dozen fields in there, and you're only interested in one, you know, it could be that the reading part takes a lot of time, you know, just to read that data in, to pull out the, the few chunks that you need, uh, and so in that case, the, the, the reading part would be um, uh, the most computationally intensive. Um, some of the more advanced um, uh, rendering techniques uh, can involve more time, especially if you go for more correctness, if you have, say, surfaces uh, combined with volumes in it, and if you want it to do it correctly, it actually needs to sort all the information from back to front when things are transparent. So if you start mixing uh, visual styles, that can actually uh, uh, really uh, uh, crank up the load on the, um, on the graphics part of the pipeline. So, um, I mean, I, I hate to uh, dodge it there, but it just it really uh, depends on the nature of what you're trying to do. And that's what makes it kind of a fun computer science project. You can use your you know, 
analysis of algorithms and you can you know look at your uh, various performance metrics and you can look at the pipeline and you can try to optimize it um, so but a really good question sorry I can't be more specific I have a question on you, Jill Pasco. Uh, yes. well, I'd like to, uh, I would like to see if there are any uh, performance tuning tools that you can use with Paraview to, you know, I guess address the different stages to see, you know, whether you're doing a good job or not at each of these stages. I'm sorry, could you repeat that one more time? I only got parts of it. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, the question is about uh, tools to. Uh, do performance tuning on Paraview on each of the stages if possible, just to make sure that you do the right, you know, right kind of, I guess, uh, the composition and, and that uh, your rendering algorithms are, you know, being, I guess, distributed as, 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 as you know, as much as possible and so on and so forth. What kind of tool do you recommend for that? One of the things, um, if, if, you, if you go into Paraview, uh, so I think there was two parts, kind of correctness and then performance. Uh, one of the things that Paraview tries to do is it only lets you, if, if you select a certain data type or one of the filters in the pipeline, it, it will only allow you to connect uh, to it those filters that make sense. Okay? That's still more than, uh, so, it, so it, it's doing some uh, preventive uh, correctness for you there, if I can in invent a term on the fly. Um, so it's keeping you from doing something that doesn't make sense. You could still do some some uh, uh, not so intelligent things in terms of a visual a visualization sense, um, uh, but that's that's a little bit of a tool in terms of uh, performance. Um, really looking, I guess, at the you know you can uh, I, I briefly showed that statistical view so you can see how you're doing in terms of uh, data sizes, how much memory it takes. So one of the things that you uh, often don't think about is well if I bring this data in and yeah I want to put a you know let's say that point data. And we put a sphere at it. You know, if you put a sphere with too many polygons there, you can quickly go from something that's a couple megabytes to a couple hundred megabytes uh, in order to store all of the polygons to represent those spheres. So, so looking at some of those uh, information views and those spreadsheets there um, can help. And then, of course, just your, I guess your, 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 one of the simplest things is just the frame rate. I mean, if you're getting, um, uh, you know, uh, if if you're purposefully using uh, the various uh, levels of detail and, and tips to keep things interactive, and you're still not getting a good frame rate, um, then you know that that's uh, part of the key. And of course, you know, it's, are the scientists getting information that is that is useful, and that's the purpose of the whole thing. So um, there may be other things. Uh, certainly, you know, um, in theory, I guess it's possible to do various types of performance tools that one would use for MPI sorts of codes uh, in conjunction you might require some compiling in um, with the uh, pair of you back end components but um, would actually have to defer to one of our HPC experts to uh, uh, verify if that's possible so I think we've um, reached the end of this first day so I'd like to thank Eric for a wonderful authoritative talk Across the world for joining in on this tutorial, and um, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And you now have various local activities, and there is dinner provided here for people who want to for the uh, participants at the uh, Indiana.